Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss activity ratios. What is a ratio? A ratio is x over y. Two figures dividing a denominate numerator by a denominator. Now think of activity ratios. It's a group of ratios that that is interconnect, interconnected in a sense of what? In a sense that they provide a comprehensive view of the company's financial health. Now, each sets of ratio deals with a separate component of the company's health. So what do activity ratios measure? They measure how effectively the company is utilizing, is using the resources. How effectively? So let's think, let's think about it for a moment. What are the company's resources? Think about their assets. What are their assets? Account receivable, inventory. Those are, as well as other assets, those are assets that the company utilize to do what? To generate revenue. How well? How well they are effectively utilizing the resources? And this is what the activities ratios would cover. We will break them into three categories. The first category will be account receivable ratios. We're going to look at accounts receivable turnover, day sales outstanding, and the relationship between doubtful accounts and receivable. That's one group of activity ratios. The second group, we would look at inventory. We would look at inventory turnover, day sales and inventory, and we would look at the conversion period or operating cycle. Then we would look at the total asset turnover as a ratio. Every time you are studying ratios, you know, at Farhat Lectures, we have a series of ratios, liquidity, activity, profitability, market ratios. The ratios don't exist in isolation. You always have to compare the ratio to something else. They always relate to something else. You have to compare them to the prior period, to competitors, to industry they don't exist in isolation and the ratios relate to each other for example when we looked at the liquidity ratios we looked at current asset account receivable is a current asset inventory is a current asset so the same accounts can be used in several ratios in other words you cannot look at a ratio in isolation because the same account is used in several ratios therefore you have to look at the comprehensive picture now keep in mind this is an art, not a science. Although you are giving a figure, at the end of the day, ratio will give you a figure. It's how you interpret the figure, how you, how you explain it in a particular context, in that company context, in the industry, in the life of the company, in the life of the industry, under economical, different economical situation. So you have to keep in mind, although you get a number, it's not scientific. So in this session, we're going to cover each of these activities ratios group separately, explain it in depth, use an example, and what does each ratio means. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with account receivable turnover. Well, what is this ratio? It measures how quickly, how fast a company collects payment from its customers. What do we do? We make a sale. We sell on account. Then we give the client a certain amount of days, like 30 days. Usually the, the industry, the typical credit sale is 30 days. Some companies provide 60 or 90 days. How often the company is collecting their money, waiting to get paid? How many times? First thing is we need to understand how do we compute this figure? How do we compute this figure? The formula is simple. We take net sales, which is sales minus returns and allowances, divided it by average net receivable. Now, we have to explain each component of the formula, then we're going to dive into the overall formula. Now, average receivable is beginning receivable 
plus ending receivable divided by two because this is a balance sheet account we use the beginning balance plus the ending balance divided by two because the balance sheet accounts are a point in time therefore we average them for the whole period now when we say the beginning receivable it's year one and the ending receivable should be year two so because the beginning receivable is the ending of the prior year plus the current year divide by two so it's the prior year plus the current year divide by two to get to the average and why do we do that it's because the receivable is a balance sheet account so this ratios help us determine what understand how liquid a company's receivable are in other words how fast are they turning the receivable into cash for example let's look at this company they make a sale they collected sometime around March then they make another sale then they collected in June you notice one one two then they made another sale in June they collected it kind of around August three they made a sale in August they collected in October and whatever they made in October end of October they collected it in December so keep that picture in mind this tells us that the receivable was turned over five times don't worry we're gonna see how we came up with that I'm just showing you what the receivable is so we discuss the denominator the numerator is sales ideally we would only include credit sales why credit sales because cash sales should not be counted for because cash sales are you're getting the cash immediately but however we have to use credit sales now the catch is this companies usually they don't break down their sales into credit versus cash because they don't have to you're not required this information could be help could be helpful for the competitor therefore they don't they don't break down this ratio so in the real world when you compute this ratio for a publicly traded company it's meaningless if they have cash and credit but the company itself management when they compute this ratio they know exactly what's their credit sales now keep in mind if the percentage of cash sales is pretty consistent from year to year then this ratio is useful so if the amount of cash is always 20 percent of sales then this ratio makes sense because you compare it you can compare it over periods to determine how well your turnover how well your turnover is is happening why because it's always that amount 80 percent of sales if it's, if it's not consistent then this ratio will not make any sense for outsiders the best thing to do is to put this ratio into an example let's assume net sales is 1.2 million and the average receivable is 235,300 now let me tell you something about the average receivable I should have, have mentioned this when you are giving year year one and there's no prior year you would assume the prior year is zero therefore you will take zero plus the current year and you'll divide by two just FYI so let's assume the average net receivable is 235,300 let's compute the account receivable turnover what should you do now go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice true false lectures anything that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student a CPA exam candidate CFA exam candidate invest in yourself good luck and study hard